Well, good morning. Today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. We're also uh, kind of celebrating Mother's Day, too, because we weren't able to be in church, remember, for Mother's Day. We have a nice gift for every mom, every dad here today, and a couple of special drawings also for some special prizes. And uh, we, again, wish you a very happy Father's Day today. Directing your attention to the scriptures, our main text is in James chapter 1 and verse 17, where it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. The Father of lights. With whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth, or begat us. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. In the Old Testament, we see God as the Almighty, as the Lord, and he is that. But he also foreshadowed uh, that special relationship that he would have with us as father. And uh, there's a story in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 17, when David was, after his conquest and establishment of the nation and, and his kingdom, remember God had made a promise to Abraham and then also to David here in this text. And uh, in Luke chapter 1, to Mary, uh, the same was said about Jesus, the Christ. 2 Samuel 7, verse 12, When your days are fulfilled, God speaking to David, and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Here it is. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Number one, We see God here in this passage as our Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father. And when David was wanting to build a house for God, the Lord had been dwelling in a tent all through their journeys in the wilderness. And David wanted to build a house, but God didn't allow him to build it. His son Solomon would build it. And he promised in this text that he wouldn't take the kingdom away from Solomon like he did Saul if Solomon sins. But there's a greater than Solomon that we're thinking about. And Jesus reveals to us God as Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for fathers. And we thank you that you as our great almighty God, creator, sustainer, that you desire that we be your children, that we be sons of God. We thank you for Jesus, the Son of God, who was with God and was God and the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you for the great promise of 
our relationship with you as our Heavenly Father because of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you'll just speak to hearts today. And if someone here or listening uh, by video uh, doesn't know God as their Father, we pray that through the Son, Jesus, the Christ, God with us, that they will call on the name of the Lord, be saved, be born into your family. Just bless this Father's Day message in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we see God in this passage that we looked at in James as the Father of lights. We'll think about that in a few minutes. But as we go back here and see this reference in the Old Testament, that God promised that he would be a father to this king that would come and that this king would be his son. Again, we find the great promises, not only immediate for Solomon, but in reference to Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, prophesied throughout the Old Testament that God would be his Father. He would be the Son, God the Son. Psalm 89, you can read all about that there. You can read about it in Luke chapter 1, when the angel told Mary, that of his kingdom there'd be no end. That holy thing, holy one, would be the Son of God. And here in this great passage in the Old Testament, he says, I will be a father unto him. He shall be my son. Psalm 2 and verse 7 says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son today, I have begotten you. We notice in this passage, 2 Samuel 7, that God promised to David a house, a family, a, a dynasty, if you please, a kingdom. And note how many times there it said forever. Verse 13, the throne is going to be forever. Verse 16, the kingdom forever. Verse 24, the nation of Israel would be forever. Uh, the, the promise, verse 25, all the promise forever. Verse 29, the blessing upon these people forever. And we've already talked a lot about the fact that that. When we're saved, when, we're, when we become a, a, a one born in Christ, that we are the family of God, we become sons and daughters of God. 2 Corinthians 17, 18 says, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So the Almighty, God who's a consuming fire, who, who dwells in a light that no man can approach unto, says, I want to be your friend and your father. And in Christ, we have those great blessings. God had made a promise to David his kingdom would be forever. God had made a promise that he'd be a father. God made a promise that David's seed would be his son and sons. And we see it all fulfilled in Jesus the Christ. We also are born into the family of God, become sons of God. John 1, 12 and 13, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but they were born of God. Born of God. So as God, our Heavenly Father, we should seek to to please him. We all have fathers of earth that we seek to please, and he's always been our greatest hero. And we always wanted his approval, and we always look to him uh, for that approval and everything we've done. But we have a great heavenly father 
who gives us his unconditional love and approval, acceptance in the beloved Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 tells us, as children of God, that we're to be imitators of God as dear children, Ephesians 5, 1. So it's our desire and our, our, our goal in life, our mark that we set is, is to please our Heavenly Father, not ourselves, like Christ did all the life long. He always pleased the Father. He never sinned. We will sin. But he made that promise again to Solomon. Though he sin, I won't reject him like I did Saul. We have a great promise in that. But it's not to be taken advantage of. It's to be lived up to. And ask God to forgive us when we do things wrong and seek to be like him. Imitators of God. Little children like to do what dad does. So let's be careful that what we're doing is things that will point them to the the Heavenly Father and His goodness and righteousness and, and His holiness. God is our Heavenly Father. Then number two, we see God as Heavenly Provider and Heavenly Protector. We look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or, what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatsoever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And then our text again in James chapter 1. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Of his own will he begat us by the word of truth that he we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We see here that all that the Father gives is his gifts. All the gifts. We have the gift of God, which is Jesus, our Savior, given to us. And how shall he not with him freely give us all things? You've asked nothing in my name. Ask and it will be given, Jesus said. Let's ask God to help us to be praying for our children and praying for their success and their salvation and and their salvation before success. Let's ask God. And let's thank God for prayer and for all the things he gives us. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him. He delights to help us. As Matthew said, as Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said, how much more will your heavenly Father give you good things if you just ask? So ask and seek and knock. Keep seeking God. Keep keep looking to God. And the greatest thing we can receive from God is that that righteousness and that character and that, that uh, life that, that he will live through us to help our children to see which way to go and what's right and what's wrong and, and to choose the right. There's a way that seems right to men, but the end thereof is death. And it's always the death of our hopes and dreams and happiness and health and sin will always lead to death. 
And so let's ask God that we might look to him as our heavenly father, that we might look to him as our heavenly provider, that we might look to him as our heavenly protector. All his gifts come down from heaven for us, and all his gifts are good. Even the struggles and the trials and tribulations and, and everything that we, we go through as we grow and learn, the Father lets the little ones fall so they might learn to walk. He helps them to get back up. And so does our God. All these things are trials of our faith that we might learn perseverance and that we might grow strong and learn from our experiences and exercise our spiritual muscles and and develop our spiritual mind and grow in knowledge and faith. 1 Timothy 6.17 tells us God gives us all things richly to enjoy. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Because God has been good to us and God has blessed us, it's in order that we might be good to others and be a blessing to others, that we might give. God has blessed us with much so that we might be a blessing to others in much. All his gifts are good, and we should seek to be good to others. Enjoy what you have, but let others enjoy some of it as well. Matthew 7, 12 says, Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. That's the fulfilling of all the law and the prophets. If we can just be like our Heavenly Father who loves and gives, and every perfect gift comes down from Him. He's the Father of light. Seek His face to shine on you. Seek His blessing. He promised in David that that blessing would be forever. And we should share that blessing with others. Do to others as you also would have them do to you. Not as they might be doing, but as you would have them be doing to you. Be rich in good works. God is our provider. God is our protector. Our Heavenly Father watches over us, assigns angels even to the little ones, he says. And every one of us has an angel as well. Uh, even as we grow up, we probably had the same angels all our lives. Yeah, mine's probably getting pretty tired out. How about yours? Those are gifts from God. They watch over and protect and provide. He tells us to pray in Matthew 6, 9, Our Father... When you talk to God, you can come to him as father. As a matter of fact, it tells us we can call him daddy, papa. It's a precious term of endearment that we have in God. So on this Father's Day, let's seek to look to God as our heavenly father. Seek to be like him and follow him in his character and person. To give a good example to all to do to others as we would want done to us. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. In the Greek, it's kind of a poetic cadence in that verse. It says, every good act of giving, dosis, and every perfect gift, dorima, is from above. Every dosis and every dorima is from above. Every good act of giving, the act of giving, and every gift, perfect gift, 
is from above. God gives us what's best always. Our Heavenly Father knows best. We pray that we as earthly fathers might live up to that as well as there used to be a little saying, Father knows best. Let's seek to be that kind of father. If you're here today or listening today and you don't know God is your heavenly father, you need to be born into this family to become a son of God, a daughter of God. The Bible says, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power, the right to become sons of God, daughters of God. I'll be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And we'll be coming out from among the world and we'll be caught up out of the world one day as we're his children. And he would bring home to our home in heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come again and that you might be with me where I am. He promised that all throughout the the New Testament of a place that's prepared. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. With your head bowed and your eye closed, if if you're not sure you're saved, all you need to do is confess to God that you're a sinner for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just pray this prayer. Say, God, I confess I'm a sinner. Thank you that Jesus died for me and rose again. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins and save my soul. Seal me with your Holy Ghost. Make me your child. For Jesus' sake. Listen, I hope you prayed that prayer and let us know how we can help you. You can find me on Facebook, Christopher Big, or YouTube, C.E. Big. Watch any of the sermons and, or look at Facebook, Clinton Road Bible Baptist Church and, and follow us there where you can receive help. Get involved in upcoming things. It'll bless your family and help you to be a Father of faith, God bless you today and may God help us all to be imitators of our Heavenly Father. Lord, bless us now as we go home and bless us in this week. Help us all, Lord, that we might seek to be the kind of Father that would imitate you and point others to you. Help us to look to you, God, Trust your promises. Seek to be able to give unto others as we receive from you, our Heavenly Father, in whose Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I bless you this Father's Day. After every catch he makes on the baseball field, he'll look to you to make sure you're smiling. When her friends make the fourth grade pep squad, but she doesn't, she'll look to you for comfort. When she feels misunderstood by her brothers and sisters, she'll look to you for understanding. They'll never stop looking to you. When she walks down the aisle on that magical day, she'll look to you to bring peace to her anxious heart. When he plays his first concert with his new band, he'll look to your face in the crowd. When she makes choices that will break your heart, she'll eventually look to you for forgiveness and restoration. They'll never stop looking to you. And you can never stop. You must never stop looking to God. They don't need you to be perfect. They just need you to be authentic and offer them Jesus anyway. 
They need you to try your very best. And even if you fail, they need to see you rise up again. They need you to follow hard after Jesus as best you can because they will never stop looking to you. Son, I'm writing these words to you because you are and always have been the legacy I've wanted to leave. And now, it's your moment. It's your chance to leave a legacy of loving Jesus with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. They'll never stop looking to you. And that's the way God created it to be.